This video provides an overview of the article, Innovation with Limited Resources, Management Lessons from the German Mittelstand, published in the Journal of Product Innovation Management and co-authored by Alfredo de Massis, David Audrich, Lorraine Ulaner, and Nadine Kammerlander. At the end of this video, we will tell you how to obtain the full article. Small and medium-sized, privately held firms are the dominant form of business around the world. In comparison to larger and publicly listed firms, they suffer from a variety of resource constraints, including financial capital and human capital. What is the consequence of such lacking resources? Does that mean SMEs do not have enough resources to successfully innovate? Not necessarily. Indeed, the German Mittelstand is an excellent example of how private firms can innovate in spite of such constraints. A Mittelstand firm is a German company that is generally small to medium in size, controlled and owned by one family, is a global market player and identifies itself as a Mittelstand firm. In 2010, the Mittelstand invested approximately 8.7 billion euros in research and development, representing one-seventh of Germany's total R&D investments. They lead Europe with overall innovation, holding nearly a half million patents, far more than SMEs in other European countries, and more than 140 Mittelstand firms rank third place or higher in their market segments worldwide. So, how do they do it? To answer this question, we carried out a thorough survey of existing literature and archival data. We also completed 35 interviews with representatives of roughly 20 highly innovative German Mittelstand firms. We learned the following. Most innovative Mittelstand firms build on six comprehensive traits which together allow them to overcome the resource shortages. Those traits are niche focus and customer collaboration, globalization strategy, preference for self-financing, long-run mindset, superior employee relations, and community embeddedness. First, German Mittelstand firms tend to focus on a specific niche. Examples range from manufacturing metal closures for sausages and hospital bed casters to blowing bubbles. But this niche focus is complemented by service to a broad array of customers. They also stay close to their customers, frequently communicating with them and even engaging them in product development. Second, there is also a tendency to internationalize, surpassing other European SMEs in their export rates. They also tend to set up their own subsidiaries rather than creating joint ventures or relying on trading partners. Their approach to globalization increases revenues, reduces market risks, and at the same time keeps resource requirements controllable. Take crane manufacturer J.D. Newhouse, for instance. It exports its products to over 90 countries, with exports growing from 5% of its sales in 1981 to over 80% in 2015. The family owners of German Mittelstand firms are known to prefer independence, in particular with regard to financial aspects. Consequently, German Mittelstand firms typically have low bank loans and rarely include outside investors. While limiting their growth, this focus on self-financing leads to financial stability and helps Mittelstand firms to survive crises. Mr. Poppel, third-generation Mittelstadt manager, illustrates, if we had to choose between 5% growth and no growth but 100% security, we would choose the security option. Long-term thinking versus a focus on short-term profits is another important ingredient of Mittelstadt firm's success formula. As Hans-Peter Frick, third-generation owner of the Frick Group, explains, I would rather describe myself as a marathon runner than a sprinter. Mittelstadt firms prefer to build lasting relationships with their employees. They have flat hierarchies and by investing in both formal and informal training, raise both employees' motivation and innovation capabilities. The owner-manager of Faber-Castell, world market leader for pencils and colored crayons, explains, Valuing long-term employees is not a one-way commitment. The employer's efforts are highly appreciated and paid back by a deep commitment of the employees toward the company. 
Little Schott firms are also very active in building up fruitful connections outside the organization with research centers, applied universities, local banks, and other local stakeholders. In turn, these partners provide Mittelstand firms with the financial and human capital they would otherwise lack. So what have we learned from Mittelstand firms? First, the study identifies six key traits of Mittelstand firms that foster innovation in spite of potential resource constraints. Traits that potentially may be emulated in contexts outside Germany. Second, it provides policymakers, both within and outside the European Union, with strategies to enhance the innovation potential of SMEs within their own countries. Lastly, the findings open up an extensive research agenda for researchers. For instance, how can the model of German Mittelstand innovation be adapted to other contexts? Will German Mittelstand firms remain successful in times of increased digitization and radical change? And what can larger publicly listed firms learn from Mittelstand firms? But this all is just the beginning. To find out more about Mittelstand firms and innovation with limited resources, read the article in the Journal of Product Innovation Management.